creativity. Like, well, they don't welcome, like Welcome, welcome to so... Debatable, a fake television show where we litigate whether Ivy League schools mascots are good or not. It's nothing to so litigate. Far. The answer is no. The no. Harvard is the Crimson. No. Brown is the Bears. Cornell's the Big Red. Dartmouth's the Big Green. Like what? Yale is the here? Bulldogs. And bulldogs come up with that are like, one, boys? they're designed to die. They can't even procreate. Yes, that's like, true. Like really fake bad. living things anyway. To be a turtle or a weather event. The <laughs> only way to save this is to let the Louisiana Raging Cajuns into the Ivy League. Oh, <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. Starts today. Uh, I mean, I have to admit, being a weather event is pretty cool. A very scary weather event. I kind of like it. I also feel like if you add raging in front of anything, it gets yeah. better. Or worse. Honestly. Well, yeah, worse. Worse There's is also couple. definitely on the table. Um, Alabaster, many things are happening in America today, but I'm glad to be here with you guys where we can find a distraction from crumbling American institutions by talking about the Knicks. That's right. <laughs> oh, That's so right. We're going to start. We're going to oh, start man. today with uh, the NBA draft where hope springs eternal. And my question for you all is, what are your thoughts on how the NBA draft shook out last night? Did hold on, 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 hold So what? did you write that beforehand or did yeah. you just come up with, okay, so you were yeah, like, I'm going to get him today with this one because the actually world's falling the, apart. It's the promoted tweet for this episode oh. right now also, so, you know, well, hand up. Hand up, pre-writing the joke. Sorry, Charlie. No, nothing's wrong with it. I just was wondering because I, I like to imagine you sitting there like, man, I'm going to kill him with this one. All right, Charlie, Clark's like, questions. are these guys really going to go on a digression about the Supreme Court right now? No, we are not. I'm just looking Kevin for the Clark. Twitter link. We're not. <laughs> Very good. I actually wanted to start with Kevin because I believe the answer to the question I wanted to ask is, is no, none of us bet on the draft. And if you did, you probably lost a ton of money because Paolo Banquero went number one to Kevin Clark's Orlando Magic, Dominique. It is rare to have an emissary from the Orlando Magic in the MSM anywhere. But we have it today here exclusively. So Kevin Clark, the floor is yours. I'm calling for an ISO here. Clear out. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Congratulations to the Lando Magic for successfully running a smoke screen for the first overall pick. Believe that's a first. You got me. <laughs> you got us. You got Woj. Yep. You got Woj. Congratulations. Everybody. You got Woj. Um, I guess I have a couple of questions. The first one is why you didn't work out the guy you took with the first <laughs> overall pick. Um, the cope here, and I've heard a couple of things about it, is that they didn't work out Jonathan Isaac or Jalen Suggs either. Is that supposed to make me feel better? <laughs> um, they zoomed with them. They nice. zoomed with oh, them. Oh, wait. We know I didn't know that part. They That's zoomed important. with them. And, and I will say, if we've learned anything over the last two years, it's, Zoom is very productive and everything gets done on Zoom. Clearly. Everybody gets this. locked in. There are three reasons, I think, to run a smokescreen. The first is if you wanted a trade package, you wanted to ratchet up some hype for one of the Rockets or Thunder to panic and say, we got a godfather off for the Magic for the first overall pick. That never came. And there's not a lot of evidence that they even tried to do that to try to execute that the second is that they like the lack of leaks that they mm. like the mystique and they wanted to keep people guessing again that yeah. comes to the expense of doing due diligence on the, the first magic. overall pick the magic kevin clark people are saying many are saying the magic not magical enough so this does help address that issue yeah and the third option is that they do not know what they're doing <laughs> And as someone who has watched 20, 32, 33 years of Orlando Magic basketball. Jesus, I didn't even think that was possible. I'm leaning heavily <laughs> towards number three. Now, <laughs> I think that Ben Carroll can win Rookie of the Year. I think he might be the best player in the draft. I, a lot of GMs think so. But... I, I'm I'm sitting here today, and the only thing we can judge, Fox, we were talking about this before we started here. The only thing you can judge is the maneuvering and the way you approach the draft process, right. and that's why I'm I'm discouraged. Do there's no reason to not do all of the homework you can possibly do. You're the Orlando Magic. <laughs> well, okay? there's. I'm sorry. I I, I want to I want to give you your space. Are you are you done? Or is there more? I mean, I I'm never really done. <laughs> 
but this point has been made. I okay. feel like you should have been done like 15 years ago, honestly, <laughs> but Dominique, I believe the, your turn. Yeah. The fourth reason that you didn't bring up is they care about us. They love entertainment. The Orlando that Magic is the do not entertain or make anything more fun. They, they're, turning the over new, they're turning on New Leaf. They are, yep. because it was more fun. We enjoyed, I mean, our colleague Woj has got like a 99% hit rate, but for a few minutes last night, he was wrong and it was pretty fun. And like <laughs> being surprised is fun. That's theater. So that's what they're doing. As someone who's not a fan of the magic, I don't care that they're sloppy and disorganized. It may be confused. It may not have any reason for why they did it. It was fun for me to be like, it's either going to be Holmgren or it's going to be Smith. What? <laughs> that was, I enjoyed it personally. So thank you, Orlando Magic. And as far as like, they should do their homework on all of the people that are in the draft. That makes sense. But why do your homework spoken as a true athlete when everyone else has already done it? <laughs> okay. Like, why do we your got, homework we when got, the other yeah. smarter kids can do it for you and they can just go on Wikipedia? Oh, and copy whoa, whoa, off whoa, of whoa, that. whoa. How do you get to them being smarter? Somehow I got the same grade by doing no work. I think I'm the smarter kid. So if there is a whole industry built up around getting all this information and they decided to draft the person that the industry told them to draft because by and large, Paolo Bancaro was considered, even though he wasn't projected to be number one, he was considered the best player in Most this draft. NBA ready, right. rookie of the year, so, favorite, all of these sort of defense, like backhanded compliments. In defense yeah. of the magic, good job. Don't do your homework. If the nerds are going to do it for you, you can just peek over at their mock draft. But hold on, Kevin, Kevin, I, I feel like Dominique. He's so angry. He's not enjoying the show at no, all. No, I just, I just, <laughs> the, the Dominique's point, defense. First of all, you're, what you're calling for is what happened, which is this is the first ever pick, first overall pick that was based entirely upon the he got the dog in him meme. <laughs> That's all this was. Yeah, the x-ray displays the dog inside of And, uh, and, and you're saying the cavity. payoff for this whole thing is the Magic <sighs> won the lottery for the first time since 2004. They've been in the wilderness. They were one pick off from a handful of superstars. Okay? Well, go, go through it. It is ugly. It's mm. the exact opposite of it the is. Kings who pick one before, which is even worse. But one pick before the Magic's lottery picks have tended to be franchise-changing superstars. But what you're saying the payoff is was an Ashton Kutcher-style prank on Woj. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you try to tell me Ashton ain't put out hits? I mean, that show was great. Ooh. Arf, arf. Yeah. Not that <laughs> dog. It's got to be good. a better dog. <laughs> I just like how we have finally, we, I mean, by the way, Dominique's sort of defense of the magic is also the great indictment. It's like, so um, not nerds running your team then, I guess. Like you don't have the kids doing all the homework, doing the job where you're supposed to do all of the homework. Unlike, I should point out, the New York Knicks, the very diligent. Can we get to them now, Kevin? Are you, are you working through? Are you, we good to move through? Because what the Knicks have done here, and I, I, I'm not even like, I'm so glad I'm no longer like invested in this team emotionally. I am not the Kevin Clark of the New York Knicks. I have no emotional attachment in Sixers this way. I, I, as a Sixers fan, I have moved on to even more traumatic pastures. But what the Knicks did last night is so funny to me. <laughs> it's so funny to me because what they're being hailed at in terms of like relative marginal doses of enlightenment, forward thinkingness, is merely trying to radically undo everything they did last year. And they're doing it by saying, you know what? We could wait for all of these big contracts, right? Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, um, Alec Burks to sort of get to the next last year of their deal, at which point they become actual assets that teams would love to have. Instead, they're saying, what if we just start giving all of them away, attaching draft picks to them in order to sign to a max contract, Jalen Brunson. Yeah. And that part, the treating of Jalen Brunson like Kevin Durant. Dominic, did you know that they're hiring Rick Brunson, yeah. former yeah. Knicks point guard, this yeah. dude's dad, Jalen's dad, yeah. to be an assistant? Like, yeah. all of this, three weeks ago they did that. All of this is endlessly funny to me. So... <clears throat> You can have good results with a bad process. You can have bad results with a good process. I think while we all like to say cute things like process over results, all we actually really want 
is I don't want somebody praising my process. I want a big damn trophy or a pile of damn money, which Jalen Brunson may get. I don't think they're going to get the big damn trophy, which is the problem. And the Knicks fans, I know, Pablo, you say that you uh, essentially are no longer a Knicks fan, but I know you well enough to know, let them get hot. (laughs) Let them make the playoffs. And then you're going to put your shirt back on immediately. But fortunately, they ain't going to do that anytime soon. And it's so sad because it was just a year ago, right? That we were praising all the new yes. leadership and we were so excited. Look what the they made out of Julius higher. Randall. They're doing so much. They only got beat by the Hawks in the playoffs. They are on the rocket ship to the moon. And now they're in the same or worse place than they were before they brought in all this new management that is well connected with all the players that they have not gotten yet. Thing. Yeah. The Jalen Brunson thing, Kevin. I don't know how you guys feel about when former agents come GMs. Yeah. Like, it, it, sometimes it's it works out, right? Bob Myers, GM of the Warriors, was an agent. Um, Rob Palenka <laughs> was an agent. Not so much working out over there. Leon Rose is somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but I think that I, I think you would find um, a hard time. Yeah, you know, the credit identifying yeah, yeah. exactly Rob Palenka as the guy who's responsible <clears throat> for it. Leon Rose, formerly of CAA. Mm-hmm. Um, Big agent, Jalen Brunson's agent, is now running the Knicks. And there has been an open question. Is he good at this? And so far, to me, the answer is no. He's bringing in a bunch of guys he knows. Like, that that's the sign of... Thibodeau, also a former client. I mean, yep. A bunch of his old, a bunch of CAA people he has connections with. Like, this isn't... He's running the Knicks, like like entourage or something like he's just getting his buddies in (laughs) and just saying like, all right, let's, let's bring this in close. And that's not how you build. Like, what are the chances that the 15 best players that Leon Rose can identify all happen to be his friends like two years ago? Like what, what, what are the odds? What a coincidence that happens to be, or he's been very close with Rick Brunson for decades. And the idea that he's in cap space with Jay for Jalen Brunson, who he represented and all that, like that is, I think I heard Brian Windhorst say that probably, you know, Leon Rose probably held Jalen Brunson within the first couple months of his birth. Okay. And that's what they're clearing cap space for at this point. And so I you're just... saying that Leon Rose brought in Jalen Brunson for his very first workout. <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah. So if, if they do not, so if they don't work him out, well, I guess they will not be free agent workouts, but if there's no meeting, there's no zoom between them. I think we'll be all right. Leon Rose knows him pretty well, but yeah. I do appreciate the, the, like collegeization of the NBA and that we get so many family members employed. I love it. Like we're getting brothers drafted. We're getting brothers signed. We're getting dads, assistant coaches jobs. Not that his dad's not qualified, but it ain't a winky dink. Yep. I mean, I'm I'm saying not that he's not qualified because I didn't do the research necessary to suggest that he's unqualified, but I mean, he was an NBA point guard. There's some Southern college football schools, which I will not name for uh, legal reasons who are famous. (laughs) for getting jobs for all sorts of family members oh, when yeah. a player likes Dude, to come to his team. The, the and now Knicks, the Knicks are doing it. And I think that's extremely admirable. It's very SEC of them. Who's had the more Knicks, success in the SEC? So so, so Rick Brunson, to his defense, right? Like longtime former NBA assistant who yeah. was just there you go. coaching Boom. high school, though, for three so? years most recently. And so? it's sort of like, well, what's the, okay. But, but beyond that, the Knicks are not above this. They tried to, they hired Quincy Doobie. Yeah. Um, former Kevin Durant friend as their assistant coach. Um, yeah, and they brought in all of these guys and it's just not, it's just not worked out. Um, and Kevin Durant obviously is not Jalen Brunson. Yep. So, you know, there is, there is that. Didn't, didn't Mark Cuban like um, invest in Dirk Nowinski's like uh, documentary? Like I am here for extra cap like financing i am down for finding ways to circumvent the cap and put more money in players pockets in their family oh tb12 Leap your cap tb12 <laughs> yeah <laughs> tb12 whatever you can concoct i'm down with it yeah uh, you get nervous we're gonna upset our partners no oh, no oh, I, by the way. I, all, all i did was just randomly oh, no, 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 numbers no, no, no. and letters and no, no, i just no, happened no, no, to be no. tb12 I personally not you getting nervous. The, the marker the marker got nervous oh, oh no 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 i was uh i was intimating that there could be some chicanery oh, around oh, the free agency that we're getting to in the next topic. So, so, so one, one, 
one bit of cleanup here. Yeah. I said Quincy Doobie. I meant Royal Ivy. That was yeah. a giant brain fart on my part. My <laughs> bad. Second thing is, it's way funnier if it's like Mark Cuban doing this, and he yeah. does it by giving people like Shark Tank deals. Like yeah, all of yeah. these guys have to come on Shark Tank, and they pitch sham businesses, and they approve all of it. Yeah, he just <laughs> hates Porzingis' idea for a car wash. Um, I do want to say the yeah. Knicks fans have shown how riled up and how fired up they can get for a playoff series loss. They've shown that that has been their apex mountain. They can get very excited when they almost beat a team in the playoffs. And Leon Rose is adjusting and saying, hey, why don't we bring in a bunch of guys who will get us to the first round? We'll lose and make a bunch of fun videos. And that's what we are anyway. We're just a mean team. It kind of reminds me a little bit like the Knicks approach, or at least in general, this overall approach uh, to recruiting reminds me of like when I was being recruited to college yeah. and how they like coaches and teams like thought we were dumb. And they thought we would decide on the wrong things yeah. or silly things. And they would waste their time making sure the Wait. women who, who greeted us were like extra beautiful. It was like, I'm not coming here because the lady who opened my door is hot. And then they would do like take us to strip clubs or the coaches would try to dap us up and, and mention rap songs that they listen to. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? How soon am I going to get on the field? How likely is it that you are going to be here? I mean, how likely is it that I'm going to get to the NFL from here? These are the questions that I and I think most players have. And I think the same thing is true of these guys. They don't care. Yes. I don't think that you are yeah. improving your chances of getting a player because you hired someone that they cool with or someone yeah. else who used to represent them or someone who may have been like half of their the chromosomes that made them like that. I don't think any of that is part of this. I, I do think that players I, make their decisions based on normal things like how much money can I get? Am I going to win a championship here? Can I have fun in this city? Am I going to be happy? Like that? I just don't think that it matters. But I feel, I feel Kevin, I feel like Dominique is very much speaking as not a Kevin Durant here, right? Cause I feel like the move oh. is if you are one of those recruits, you don't, you don't get offered those things and get swayed by them. I feel like you implicitly demand the things you want and then they just give them to you. Right? Well, I'm like talking, I'm not talking about that. I understand that. But what we're having is the things happening beforehand. Like you mentioned yes, someone who yes, was close yes. to Kevin Durant getting a job. That is the tantamount to the coach coming to my house and saying, you heard that new Hova? Get yeah. the hell out of here. <laughs> like, can we win a championship or no? Nah? Like, are you going to max me out or no? Nah? You got some space, some cap space. What are we going to do? Like, that's what matters. I think that's proof to my point. Kevin Durant got all the things that he wanted. He was going to get that no matter where the yeah. hell he went. If he told the, the Nets to hire some dude, they would hired him. Like, we see it time and time again. I don't have a problem with the players demanding these sorts of things. I have a problem with the teams being dumb enough to think that it's going to help. That's the part that blows my mind. Alabaster? I just want to note, and we'll move on to the Kyrie and Kevin Durant of this, of this all, but uh, KD did demand someone get hired, and that was DeAndre Jordan. And then he yeah. demanded that he started, and they traded uh, Jared Allen. So... <laughs> You know, sometimes his his recommendations don't work out. I never, um, I wasn't arguing that his recommendations were good, but that, that was a good point. I just like the idea of some assistant football coach practicing the word Hova in the mirror yeah. before going to dap up Dominique. Perilous. We got out of this segment without a breakdown of mid-Atlantic strip clubs in the mid-2000s. Oh, they were depressing, mm. man. Depressing. <laughs> I remember, um, I don't want to say the well, player's I name. Thought we, I thought we got out of it, but here we are. A lot of old bay. Name just maybe, old bay. Maybe he doesn't want to be identified as this, but when I visited Pittsburgh, they took me <gasps> to a sad place. It was so sad. <laughs> it was so so sad. It was, was like, that was that, that that belt was real rusty. Is what you're saying? It, oh, it was a lot of guilt tipping happening there. Like, <laughs> okay, let's uh, yeah. let's move on to uh, Kevin. Yeah, Durant. get us out of here. Everything. Don't ruin All my right. Friday. So. This story sort of took over the draft last night, and I think it's fascinating. Um, and I want to ask you guys, at this point, do you expect Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant to be on the net, Nets next season? So I 100% expect Kevin Durant to be on the, next, on the Nets next season. Kyrie Irving feels like a coin flip to me at this point. And I say this because even before we got Kevin Durant on his podcast with Eddie Gonzalez today, talking about how he's deliberately not going to interfere essentially with Kyrie Irving's free agency decision. He's not going to twist arms with that's management. All of that was both implied and pretty obvious to me from listening to him actually talk today. 
It was also just the reports. We were laughing at Woj getting some stuff wrong earlier in the show. I want to laugh at how Shams phrased some of the stuff about Kevin Durant's, quote, threats about what would happen if Kyrie decided to leave, that, quote, he would mull future options. Yeah. Like, if that is the most toothful language that you have from somebody, stop or I'll mull future options. Like, <laughs> come on, guys. This is the draft. Like, it's time to show up, put up or shut up. And I like, I like, up. I like, um, don't make me mull. That's a, that's a good one. Is he just <laughs> don't hey hey hey, hey, so, hey don't make hey. I'll 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 mow the hell out of you. I will <laughs> I will mow this whole thing down <laughs> if you don't mess ar- if you mess around and let my man leave. <laughs> oh gosh. So yeah, I mean, I don't. I we've been saying this, Dominique. Like reading between the lines here, I don't think Sean Marks goes and does that press conference to start with. Kevin, remember that one where he's like, "Yeah, we need people who com- who commit and all that stuff." Just subtweeting Kyrie or just actually addressing him directly, right. depending on your on your mileage on that one. I don't think that happens without Kevin Durant's blessing. And Kevin Durant, by yeah. the way, has a four year contract. Yeah. He does not have a no trade clause. Stop like, it! The amount stop of it! Stop it! Plus. I need you to stop with that. You and everyone else who covers this sport, like. I'm not mad at you. Like, I understand the point, but saying how long a basketball star's contract is does not matter. That stopped mattering officially. Like, unofficially, it stopped mattering uh, quite some time ago. It stopped mattering officially when James Harden did what he did last year. So stop it. I don't don't care how many years he has left on his contract. They are so talented and so special and such unique – assets and skill sets and human beings that they can sign whatever they want and then rip it up and you can't do nothing about it or you can just tank because they've made so much money on top of the fact that they're so valuable that Kevin Durant's lifestyle is not going to change yes. if he does not play another I was going to say down but if he doesn't play another basketball game it's not going to change so the money threat like it's not really much of a threat to them so what are you going to do if he says I don't want to be here then your only hope is that he which Kevin Durant is, or some player is sensitive to the backlash that they're going to get. That's the only hope, because otherwise they can hold you hostage. Yeah, uh, every NBA player can just gain 15 pounds and leave. I mean, we saw that last year. We just, you're either a couple buffet stops or a fat suit away from getting your way to town if you need it. Um, there's only one way out of this, and I'm not the first person to propose this. I'm just imagining a fat suit for KD now. And it's I'm time. He might not amazing. be able to pull that off. It would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, oh, my, my mind went to Chet Holmgren initially, where it's like, oh, you can gain 15 pounds that easily? <laughs> uh, we're, we're opening up the lines of communication. We're going to trade Kyrie for James Harden again. We're just undoing it. <laughs> we're going back. We've solved it. It solves everybody's oh, problem. Gosh. Hard they, I mean, with Durant. and Kyrie allegedly, you know, according to that list that was leaked, the Sixers are on it. You know, they're on the list of teams that he would approve, which is another bit of theater and stagecraft, which I find endlessly absurd. But here are his teams of interest, according to our Adrian Wojnarowski. Lakers, Clippers, Knicks, Heat, Mavs, and Sixers. And to Dominique's point, you're right. Like anybody can hit the detonate button on a contract whenever they want, if they're good enough. But it does feel... Like, this would be, I mean, he just signed it last year, I believe, Alabaster. This would be yet another new test of, like, how agitated the CBA renegotiation is going to be come the end of this year. Well, and I'm Um, also, I'm not sure that it's, it would be the worst thing for the Nets either. So, like, that's, they don't. Which part? If, so, they're in a situation right now where they can't win a championship unless they find a, someone with talent equivalent or better than Kyrie to get on this team. And Kyrie is not reliable enough for you to win a championship. So Mm -hmm. they do not have a championship roster. They don't have the wiggle room or the expectation that they're going to bring someone else in to replace him. That's going to be good enough. So like they took a big swing, brought all these people in the best thing they can potentially, the best thing they can do now, if they're looking to win a championship in the near future is move on, like move all these assets and, and do what OKC is doing. They have like eight picks in the first round of the next two drafts. But when Banyama is all we care about. I got it right today, Baba. You did. Dominique got it right, Alabaster. The Thunder, by the way, to just put a footnote on our previous discussion. Yeah, I mean, like, if you believe they know what they're doing, and I happen to be, I think, in that camp, I believe oh, they they're well run. I mean, they got two kids. They got one real super high ceiling skinny kid, Chet Holmgren, who we just laughed at, but might actually be the best player. And they got that, I think, another French kid? Right? Yeah. A different French kid? Who's who, Yang? 
Usman Jiang, yeah. yes, who is like one of those kids where it's like, they're kind of the Spurs now, where it's like they do things and based on their brand reputation, I'm just like, oh, that must be smart. They got um, just two, because they I don't know. Two Jalen's too. I also like, I think oh, it's double Jalen's. I don't know how good this year's French kid is, but it's smart. Bring bring a French kid in OKC, smooth out whatever <laughs> cultural things we have. So it's nice and smooth for my man Vic when he gets here next season. So, oh, this is like a scouting, like a like a advanced. Yeah, team. that's what it is. He's he's like yeah, he's advanced a, team. Yes, yeah, the president like, has an advanced team. <laughs> that's yep. it. They're sending him in. He's gonna bump like up gonna, the restaurants. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, gonna test gonna, those, he's test gonna those like, baguettes. The, the escargot in OKC, yeah. subpar. <laughs> Let's bring in some real French chefs. Wow, some I Sam Presti shade, Alabaster. The last All Star he drafted was James Harden. Okay, but he also you know drafted. Kevin Durant or Russell Westbrook. But anyhow, what was your original interjection here? Sorry, what I was going to say earlier was, I think it's back to the Kyrie, Kevin Durant stuff. Yes. I think the thing that's fascinating is the game of chicken going on with the Nets because the Nets are in a uniquely leveraged position where they gave up all their picks to get James Harden. And so they can't just blow it up and suck. Or the, Houston, or the Houston Rockets are going to end up with all of these top five picks. Like, they're teetering on the point of being, you know, the Nets from the KG Pierce era where it's like, mm -hmm. we have to start from scratch. We have nothing. We have no picks. So, like, normally I'd be like, all right, the Nets actually have some lev leverage over KD and Kyrie. Kyrie doesn't have a robust market. Kevin Durant's under contract for four years. But given their lack of options of how to manage this, it seems like they kind of just have to pay these guys. Well, well, hold on, though. I think this is where the keystone issue of this entire story that no one has, I think, the ability to report out with real definitiveness is whether Kevin Durant really cares if Kyrie Irving stays or goes. If Kevin Durant is there, they're a contender. They are, just by virtue of his talent in the Eastern Conference. He's just that good. You they're find not, pieces around him, they contender. can do that. They're not yes, a contender. No, Dominique, yes, they are. They're a playoff team. They're not a contender like a championship contender with just I, Kevin Durant and those other guys, like you're going to have to get. So those the, other the, guys, Ben yeah. Simmons. <clears throat> yeah, I believe. Ben's. So, you want to just re stop it. Relitigate that. Stop it. We're going to relitigate that right now. We're going to relitigate that right no, now. No, we're not going to. The point, the point, I'm not going to get hostile and I'm not going to debate you on debatable. We're I'm going to say that you are wrong. And the most important, the most difficult thing is they're going to have to trade Kyrie for someone who can, for a superstar. And, of the teams that are on the list, which one of them is dumb enough to send a reliable superstar yeah. in exchange for Kyrie Irving? None of them. So, like, I don't, I don't see how they're a, a contender unless their only hope is that Kyrie turns into a reliable person who can show up to work on time. Yeah. Like, I don't have a problem if He'll Kyrie get right on has that. these other interests. That's cool. <laughs> Do your thing. But what we're not going to do is win a championship until you figure that out. So that's that. It's wow. It's you know, it's an impossible situation for them. This is but part of mortgaging your future is you've mortgaged your future. Like how are they surprised <laughs> by this? Yeah. Going they, all in, like this is what we talk about in football all the time. Like the actual concept of going all in, it's an actual risk. Burn the boats. Yeah. Well, you burned the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we got to uh, we got to unburn this boat. <laughs> Alabaster. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, I mean, Jalen Brunson is a more reliable player than Kyrie Irving. He, uh, Kyrie's a perfect fit for Luca. Why not just sign and trade and flip him? Um, so, do you say fake trade or bad trade? Fake, fake, yeah, fake, fake bad. That was implied. I don't really or understand whose problem that solves. Is is Rick Brunson in the deal too? <laughs> is Jalen Brunson? It solves the Knicks problem because now they don't have to do, do the Jalen Brunson <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, it's not the worst trade, Alabaster, but like, no one, no one's. I mean, maybe we'll get to a point where all of this trash I'm talking about Jalen Brunson will just explode in my face kind of like how Dominique is now the mortal enemy of Steph Curry right and now. his associated brands yeah um but yeah, until they, then they all I'm pretty, coming for me pretty unworried should about we, the Jalen uh, Brunson thing should we yeah, entertain that, Chris Broussard's fake trade there we go about the funniest Richard, thing Jimmy about oh, I'm sorry what well, was Chris, Broussard's fake Chris Broussard trade? had Jimmy Butler going yeah that's absurd Brooklyn. it's absurd 
why why i mean i guess it's possible just because like maybe they are tired of jimmy butler because like that's the rumor in general is like jimmy butler can't be at a place for like multiple years because he wears on people yeah but why would you trade that problem for another think, guy in i'm gonna situation. bring in someone who it takes less it takes much less than three seasons to get tired of i don't know <laughs> yeah. i want to talk about yeah. steph curry real quick <laughs> yeah, please. Do you want to you want to you want to relitigate any part of how you are now his mortal enemy? The funny, no, I'm fine with being his mortal enemy because I don't think he actually takes it as seriously as the fans do, and I'm hesitant to criticize fans because their fanaticism is what allows us the to yeah. sit here and talk about this. But they be really mad. Like yeah. the idea that I <laughs> that Steph Curry deserves an apology for me. Apology for what? Like what am I apologizing for? Steph Curry because I didn't believe in him because I gave reasonable analysis given the circumstances. Steph Curry has a all-star father, believes in him. Fantastic mother, believes in him. Uh, kids, wife, <laughs> believe him. The whole damn Bay Area believes in him. I mean, on that segment alone, Marcus Spears believed in him. But I owe him an apology? Fooey. Wow. There, would you a like fooey. to? Having said that, would you like to apologize? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Steph, you're the man. <laughs> Um, I want to bring us back to Kyrie for one second. Now that you have uh, apologized to, uh, we do you extinguish know. the fire on that boat. Yeah. yeah, the guy who carried your beloved Kevin Durant for a couple of years. Um, oh, yeah. So what I want to bring us back to Kyrie for a second. Are we sure that you guys aren't just overrating Kyrie? Like, uh, to back to the Brunson point. Like, okay, Brunson was just the second best player on a team that made the conference finals. The last time Kyrie did that was 2017. It'll be six seasons ago. And, like, Kyrie has not been a reliable player since. And, like, you have Kevin Durant, you have Ben Simmons, you have Joe Harris, you've got a bevy of talent on that team. Maybe you want a reliable two-way point guard who can hit shots and play off the ball when Simmons is handling. Why? Maybe maybe Kyrie is not the perfect fit and is a bit overrated at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I, I am of the belief that the Nets are better than we're giving them credit for in our collective sort of show today. I just have the whiplash, I think, of regarding Jalen Brunson as a max player now. Like, that happened, yeah. like, midway through last season when Luka was out, and, and he was very good, and the Mavericks were surprisingly good. I don't know, man. I, 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 just, I just feel like he's kind of like uh, discount Fred Van Vliet without a discount now. Yeah. And that, I mean, to me, is an issue. I, I have the same feeling, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's James Harden. And he just needs the ball more for us to see how great he really is. That's possible. And I think the argument that Alabaster just put together is a good one. I think you're right. It's possible that he could be a better fit. But they got swept in the first round. That's like, the issue. That if, is the if issue. He's, if we are willing to accept that it's a lateral move or even an improvement, because at least he's going to play in most of the games and he's not going to have like weird off-court issues that distract from the team, that's an improvement. But is it good enough to win them a championship? Because I think that's what they want. I think that's that's the only measure of success for Kevin Durant at what yeah. year sixteen in his career. Like if Jalen Brunson can't do that, then and I, I guess maybe who knows? Anything can happen. They stay healthy. They win it. But it just doesn't feel like a major I, upgrade. They don't feel like a championship team with that core yeah. to me. I'm in total agreement. When you have KD, the only thing that matters is what raises your ceiling. And KD can go out in the first round on his own. Like that, that's, he's good enough to where you're like, he'll get you to the first round. He can lose in five games, but he can do that by himself. You don't need a second yeah. guy for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think Brunson is the kind of guy who raises your ceiling. It's like, okay, we're having a different conversation. A reliable Kyrie is um, a, I'm going to really get us off track. A reliable Ben Simmons helps yes. um but that's a lot of ifs yes, and and i just don't see it right now and this is this is the downside to to that kind of bet on a, on a franchise yeah i just like how we got dominique at some point in this segment i forget how he even got there he he unironically just said fooey yeah fooey and that's fooey that, that that's what i'm gonna take into our weekend i'm old i'm sorry <laughs> yeah that coach coming to you with hova just should have gone with some real <laughs> real older references I mean, it was so many sympathy tips. It's like when you leave your hotel room really messy, you just like, or you like have to send a dish back to at the server a bunch of times. Yeah. Like I tip more if I'm a bad customer than if you give great service. <laughs> Is there something that a overworked mid 2000s ACC defensive coordinator could have said to you that would have made you more interested? Like a pop culture thing that he could have connected with Nothing. you on? Okay. Nothing, nothing like I, it's the thing. It's like when you're shopping for something in particular, 
if you're like, let's say you want some new shorts because it's hot outside and they come up and say, you, you know what? This TV show is really great. It just, it seems completely disconnected to me as weird and, and nonsensical as that statement I just made is. <laughs> that's how weird and nonsensical it feels to have someone when you're at a job interview, essentially, I don't know if you are conducting an interview or you're receiving the interview, you had a job interview and they're like, Hey, blah 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 you watch that debatable show like what what are, what are we doing oh, oh wait 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 wait. the show that you're talking about that's great is this one that's yeah. what, that's no, what yeah, i was gonna say are. that's what we defensive are. coordinators right. now in 2022 they're yeah. re greeting recruits at the door and saying did you guys see jacoby on debatable yesterday <laughs> Dom you dominique we got two people Killed sitting it. here and you with jacoby yeah. Dominique, yeah. that was spoken it's like someone who has been cool their entire life and has never had to make awkward small talk. Like, hey, did you see that episode of that show? Like, must so, must be nice to be cool. I got, so it's not it's not about being cool. It's about like being the best athlete from the time that you're little. Is you don't have to be cool. Whatever you do is cool. And it's like you get away with it, and then you don't have to make small talk because everyone Wait. comes up to you and like, let's talk about football. I don't have to make any small talk. I, I am deficient in a small talk arena. I have a, I have a follow up for that. So you go to Maryland and you still might be the best player, uh, best athlete on the team. Was Bruce Perry there? He's a good athlete, right? Stop. Um, what, yeah. Um, That's a no. Th then yeah, you get still into the, best, the yeah. NFL and you're not the best athlete on the team. Did you then have to just come up with some small talk? No, like you don't, it's not, <laughs> I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like it's not small talk, it's talking. Like small talk to me is to sounds like a, when you're having a conversation with someone that you don't really want to have a conversation with, or you're awkward, you're just meeting like that is small talk within the football locker room. We have already advanced past all that because we're such a small little subset of society that we know so much about each other without even meeting each other that we skip the small talk on day that. two. The we first time you about... went to Ray Lewis, you probably said something really weird. <laughs> what up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got ha me. Happy to be here. Actually, you when you, first time you meet Ray Lewis, you don't have to say a damn thing. I'll oh, have yeah. you know that Ray Lewis is gonna, he is just gonna hit you with all, he's gonna seduce you with his words <laughs> quicker than you know. And you're gonna try to fight it, but next thing you know, yeah, maybe might be. I, and I, I've, I've met Ray Lewis. Might be a prayer or two as well in there. Might oh, pray with him. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we are commencing the the ongoings. What up, bro? I, 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 bow, I, I, your, I, bow your head, hold my hands. <laughs> As we pray for what we call crime. Yeah. Pablo um, thinks we're exaggerating. We are not exaggerating. God, nah, the man is, is a man of the cloth. God fear a um, man. All right, guys. Well, let's, yeah. let's actually pivot to some more recruiting. And uh, this is the story of Arch Manning committing to Texas. And my yeah, question ooh. for you guys, what are the chances that Texas is back can someone tell me if arch manning 100%. is everything that he's supposed to be because i i don't have the time to find out and i just got a lot of news alerts yeah. about him now and dominique's already said 100 percent. so someone explain this to me dominique you want me to start or you no nah, you got it buddy okay. it seems like you know more about arch manning than i do i heard so, the last name and and all the the hubbub mm -hmm. i assume that boy nice Fooey and he, hubbub is what we got so he far. He is. He does have that dog him. in him. I'm happy to report I've watched the tape. He does <laughs> have the dog in him. Um, he is not, if you listen to the recruiting experts who've watched a lot more tape than I have, not probably the best quarterback in this class. I'd probably go to a Malachi Nelson. Uh, Nico, who's going to Tennessee, if you believe the rumors, he may have, Nico may have reset the NIL market. Um, he's just one name. His name is Nico. Just it's a long one name, like, it's like a Prince. Big, it's a long oh, okay. name. So we're going with Big Nico in this conversation. Um, I thought we were friends here, Pablo. I, I'll have a I'll have a word with you after the show. Clearly, the man just said Nico. <laughs> if he had a last name ready, he would have said it. You jerk. Uh, Dante Moore. Uh, Dante Moore, uh, a big quarterback from Detroit, is in that mix. Five star. Uh, hold, on, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't got a middle name for Dante. Was it Dante? <laughs> just Dante Moore. What are we doing? Uh, Liam Newton has taken Dante Moore under his wing in the seven on seven circuits, even though they're, uh, he's not from anywhere near where, where Cam is from. Um, Jaden Rashad is in the mix. I think what most people seem to say, Pablo, is that if you took away the name, Arch Manning would be a high four star, maybe a five star, depending mm, on the camps he got oh. into. Um, you know, someone I was listening to some of the recruiting podcasts yesterday, no big deal. Um, and they were saying that <laughs> he's going to be a good power five starter. That, 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 that's the ceiling on him. I don't think this is a generational 
prospect. I think earlier in his high school career, it looked like that may have been the case, but it looks like some of these other guys are the ones who are maybe in the Bryce Young type zone where he's going to come on as a redshirt freshman and have an instant kind of national champion type impact. Mm. That, was that straw paper? No, it's plastic. You, you're trying to kill the turtles. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Arch Manning. I mean, I think to be able to secure, I don't know, like it, to me, it sounds like where we are headed with NIL is back to the recruiting conversation off the jump street. Don't tell me that you listen to yeah. Lil Baby or Mariah the Scientist, who I learned who that was a couple weeks ago. Oh, that I not... thought you made that. I thought you made that up. No, nah, it's a it's a real person, and I was shocked. But anyway, that's Doesn't not going to impress me. Tell me where to cash at. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, and that's why I would say that maybe 100% is aggressive, but the cash is in Texas. They got yeah. cash. They got money for days. So if um, and have, bringing Arch Manning in is only going to lead to them getting more money and more prestige. So if they aren't back yet, they're going to they gonna be back yeah. soon unless they just blow it and they keep singing that stupid racist song. They might blow it. They might blow it. Um, I, there's one point I wanted to make because a lot of the folks have pointed out it's not getting Arch the player, it's getting Arch the hype machine and what yeah. that brings. And now the five-star left tackle is going to say, I want to go to the league. I want to block for this guy who everybody's talking about. I mean, we're not doing debatable segments on Malachi or Nico, right? I mean, we could with the NIL stuff, but we're going to put that aside love for a Nico. second. Um, <laughs> we all love Nico here. That's why we all, we're going to learn his, his, his uh, last name for the next show. Um, but like the way it was put, Bud Elliott said this yesterday on CBS, the quarterbacks name the group chat. Like that's their, that's their role Ooh. in all of this. And you Ooh. know that Arch Manning is texting a bunch of guys and saying, come play with me. We've got all the hype. Every scout in the country is going to come to me. And, and I think that means something for recruiting. So it's not just Arch, the high four star, if you took his name off, it's Arch, the brand. And that, that yeah. matters in recruiting. Peyton's going to show up to some games. Peyton seems to really like to go to amateur athletics. He'll be out there, him and Eli. That'll be cool. That's hype is always good. Feels Hold like on, I got to, oh. I, I got to, I got to, I got to rename our group chat real quick and, and show. There's Nico. To to whatever Nico's last name is. Yeah. Oh yeah, there he is, Nico. I'm, I'm going to cancel that group chat as soon as you try to assert some <laughs> <laughs> Gen Z dominance over this mm. millennial group chat yep. definitely the quarterback <laughs> here got it <laughs> i know i'm sorry um, so i can't see this no nah, oh, i mean God. you you <laughs> pablo i'll give you that you are the quarterback but we run an old school offense where, <laughs> <laughs> where you hand it to me you say hike then you hand it to me and you get your ass out the way don't get hurt don't get hurt your play action i don't care what the analytics say your play action is built off of the threat of the running game what's next wow What's next is See something that, that we didn't think was going to be topped last year, and that's Shohei Otani, who is sort of Babe Ruth all over again, and he has been going off lately. He had multiple home run games. He followed it up with the dominant pitching performance. And my question, or really a statement that I want you to finish, if Shohei Otani does something unbelievable again tonight, then blank. If Shohei Otani does something unbelievable again tonight, then I feel like we, I mean, gosh, our political system's a little log jammed right now. I was going to say we should get legislation to get him off the Anaheim Angels or the Los Angeles <laughs> Angels of Island, whatever they're called now. Um, because this is, this is, we know a version of what happens, right? And it's the Mike Trout story. And this is better than Mike Trout, but the idea that you have him and he's just like relegated to the C block of a great television show. <laughs> Um, That's not that is that, that is that a fake television show excuse me um that is that is a problem it really is like there could be a lot more juice with this squeeze and instead eight innings 13 strikeouts it's like yeah cool great um all right if Can they were good if he yeah, played please. for the yankees would he be anything before the, like maybe gets ahead of the arch manning question like oh, it's yeah. just a baseball problem at this point yeah i mean i well, think it's different if he plays for the yankees Honestly, like I, I do think it, I, I mean, I laugh when people say that we're in like a world where it doesn't matter what part of the country you're in, because it absolutely matters. Like there are more people to care about what you're doing here. And there are more people who like matter, frankly, about um, impacting culture in general, who will care all states if you're matter. in a, if all you're, states matter. <laughs> nah, not the same if you are in those states. So like I do think it would matter 
it still may not knock out the NBA draft, but it would matter if he was in a big city. I guess my question is, do you think it would matter if they were good? Like, I, I don't know that it would matter. I think, well, no, I, I think it would, because when you get into October, you reach a different yes, stratosphere and, story, and 20 yes. million people are watching you. Even if it's the ALCS, even if it's the ALDS, yeah. people are getting to know who you are. I mean, like, I remember as far as visibility goes, because I look at traffic all the time. No one really knew who Richard Sherman was, even though he was the best cornerback in football for a while, other than Dominique Foxworth, who was on the other side of the country at that point, um, until he plays in January, makes that play, and everybody says, oh, this is a super-duper star, which he remained for another decade. Playoff before, games matter. You know, I agree, but before Alabaster comes in and yeah, hopefully I got says the too, same yeah. thing, um, we have an opportunity to talk about how great he is, and we're just talking about how um, – no one cares how great he is. I have a follow-up question, Alabaster, off of that also, as I acknowledge what Dominique is saying by doing exactly that. Um, Kevin just dropped that he looks at traffic all the time. What does that mean? Uh, it means I, – I, I actually can't do it. I can, I can look at some of, like, the podcast stuff, like the numbers, and I can look at, like – but I can't look at the article traffic anymore. And the WSJ was much easier. So you could oh, see, like, the teams oh. people care about. And, like, the th real, oh, there are certain teams – that like college is amazing because there's really only five teams that anybody cares about. Um, NFL is a little different, but you can write about certain teams and it's like, no. Like I believe ESPN once revealed that the most searched teams, one through 31, are all NFL teams. And then the, it's the Jaguars who are not in the top 30. Oh, I, I would have guessed it was all the Dallas Cowboys, but 31 iterations of typos for <laughs> I, Dallas Cowboys. No, I think it's like one through 31 and then like the Lakers and then the Jaguars are like 40th. ESPN once revealed this. Oh, yeah, I would have gone like Dallas Cowboys would be like the second most popular. I'm just, NFL I'm team. looking at the analytics. I don't yeah. care if yeah. the article He's, has Dominique, that dog Dominique, Kevin in. Clark, he, he stats us down. He listens he to recruiting podcasts. He's, he looks at traffic he SEO wears a blazer. trends. He wears a blazer. Alabaster, a we steamrolled today. you. Do not wow. shortchange me. We're, we would never imply that you are wearing shorts and shortchange <laughs> you literally and figuratively. Um, Alabaster, sorry, but not sorry. Ah. Nope. No time for Allie. Dave by the bell is about to rant about the Yankees. Oh, God. To quote a very old Dominique Foxworth, hot diggity dog. We made it to the weekend. Fooey and flim flam and everything uh, else old people say. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. A very young person thing to sing. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Are you Clubhouse. about to rap? Oh, I no, it's from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Don't be oh. racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> Good job, Kevin. Wow. Way to not have any emotional reaction to that. <laughs> well, well schooled.